23 and a half after 7 is our time here on Sky 99.5 FM. And we continue to examine some of the trending stories. Uh, as I had indicated earlier, one of the trending stories over the weekend was that of uh, a young gentleman who would have expressed frustration over the way uh, the justice system carries out its business, particularly law enforcement officials when it comes to investigating murders, responding very emotionally uh, to the uh, murder last Wednesday of Videsh Subar and his uh, caretaker, Hafiza Muhammad, the brutal murder of those two people, and making a statement in social media, which has been pulled down subsequently, and making a statement to the effect that maybe something along a similar line should happen to the Prime Minister's family, and then maybe we'll get some justice in the place. Maybe then they will take this crime thing seriously. However, it appears that he may have fallen in contravention of the cybersecurity legislation that was passed not too long ago. To put it in perspective for us, on the line, Senior Attorney at Law and Member of the Police Service Commission, Martin George. Good morning to you, Martin George. Hi, good morning to you, Jesse. Good morning, good morning Trinidad and Tobago, and good morning to your panel. Good morning, Dr. Wayne. Good morning, Edison. Uh, Dr. Wayne is on assignment, so he's not in oh, with us this okay. morning. Yes. Martin George, now just on the surface of it, you would have seen the stories coming out. Um, the, the commentary coming from that particular gentleman was quite harsh, actually. Um, as a matter of fact, it would have been extremely upsetting to anyone who would have read what he posted on Facebook even as you understand the emotion behind it and the frustration behind it, because he has a relative who would have been murdered about six or seven years ago, and no one has ever been arrested for that murder. No one has ever been charged for that murder. So speaking out of that, of that frustration, he wrote what he wrote, but that does not excuse what he did, does it? Not at all, Jessamy. And the thing is, in fact, I think you are still putting it very mildly to describe mm. it as harsh. It is absolutely unacceptable. I think we, we have to be very clear in terms of that. No matter how strongly we may feel about a situation or how strongly we may feel in terms of, you know, um, what is happening in our country, um, we must never, ever cross that line where we are wishing and hoping for violent attacks upon our parliamentarians or our politicians or our leaders for mm -hmm. that matter you know because at the end of the day we are the ones who elected and chose them and put them there and you know, even so if they, and even if we they, didn't personally our neighbors did that's right and the, and the fact is that they are there and they are there for a purpose and it certainly cannot be acceptable that we um you know make statements like that and i have said it repeatedly on this program jesse may and i've said it you know in many other quarters i i i see a growing recklessness in terms of the things people say post publish online as if there is absolutely no reckoning to be had in terms of that this is not acceptable. We must exercise some kind of restraint in the things we say and do. You know, and I, I, I think this ought to be a lesson for all persons. And I saw some people, you know, um, coming out in his defense saying maybe he didn't understand. And, and seasoned politicians, media, seasoned politicians coming out in his defense as well, huh? which, which was a rubbish. little scary. Yes, which is rubbish to say he didn't understand the, the power of social media. There's nobody who understands the power of social media more than young persons. Indeed. They're the ones who use it all the time. So don't give me that as any excuse at all. He very well knew the effect of what he was doing and what he was saying. So it's absolutely unacceptable in that sense. And, I mean, I think certainly if there are consequences to be faced, he ought to face the full brunt of them. You recall a couple of years ago, a few years ago, um, there was a, a, a porter, I think, who worked at the airport yes. who made threats um, to the life of former Prime Minister um, Kamala Prasad Bissessa. And right. he was charged and brought before the courts. You know, so the thing is, similarly, I think that if it is that there are consequences, then this young man should also face similar consequences. We, 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 must, we must, as a nation, regardless of what your political persuasion is, regardless of where you fall in the political divide, we must all come together and stand against this type of thing. Because I tell you, this is just the opening of it. If it starts here, then it, you know, it, you, 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 it, there's a domino effect. And you, you, there's no telling where it can end. 
Mm-hmm. You know, so, I mean, this is something that I think ought to cross political lines, you know, and we must all stand against this type of thing. Well, you know, as you talk about crossing political lines, there are people on the other side who felt that the, 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 that this is the kind of uh, totalitarian stance that should never be. They felt that it was harsh that, um, you know, there was this move to arrest this gentleman, um, even though there is a law that is in place and he did break the law. Um, you know, so they're saying, and they also made comparisons to um, when a teenager had posted a video on, on, on Facebook a few years ago, haranguing and using obscene language against um, former Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bissessa. Yes, I recall that one. Also. And they said, oh, the Prime Minister visited the girl, etc., 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 and the girl apologized and everything like that. But this is a completely different scenario. You well, know. the point is, first of all, you, you're talking about um, this arrest, from what we understand, was done under the Cybercrime Act, which may not have been in the law books, at ah. the time that that young girl, um, you know, committed her act. So, therefore, there are two things that we have to look at there. Secondly, um, I saw, and I think it's also careful, in fairness to um, the young man in, in this scenario, we must also be careful to make the distinction. I've seen many commentators say that he made threats against the prime minister and his family. Now, I have analyzed the actual words that I have seen used, and yes. the, what has been published is correct. I, I would raise the question as to whether it actually amounts to a threat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you look at how it was worded, right, he expressed a wish or a hope or a desire that persons may do certain things. Now, I am not sure that that in itself amounts to a threat. It's obviously an awful and evil wish and an awful and evil hope and certainly something that one ought not to express publicly and publish on social media because you ought not to be wishing that kind of thing on anybody else, regardless of what. Now, Mr. George, don't you think the the, the extremity of the language um, demonstrates, and maybe he's speaking for a lot of people who perhaps do not have the means, as the case might be, to go on on, on cyberspace and so on, that um, a growing impatience with the the institutions and the non-functioning institutions of the country, and that um, he would be speaking for a lot of people because nothing seems to be working. So this law now seems to be working when um, uh, somebody is is expressing himself Mm -hmm. as he feels. Well, Edison, it certainly could not be acceptable, and I'm certain that you are not advocating that anyone in Trinidad and Tobago ought to, regardless of what they feel, express themselves in that way publicly and be allowed to get away without some kind of consequence because then you are de- you are descended into anarchy because then mm-hmm. the next thing is that you will feel well compelled that look i could take up a i could go and get my three canal and go and you know deal with people who i feel are not functioning effectively mm-hmm. we, we, it, it's going to be the law of the jungle and i certainly think that as a media practitioner with so many years edison you are not and i would love you to clarify your position on this. I certainly don't think you are advocating that this is okay. No, 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 but I, I'm absolutely trying to 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 to, to um, voice the opinions of, 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 I suppose, a lot of people who feel that so many things are not working as the case and might Edison, be. Edison, as a media practitioner with so many years' experience, you yourself know that there are ways to voice things and there are different ways that are unacceptable of voicing the same thing. And that's the point we're making here. You can express your frustration in, you know, in so many ways. You, you could voice and articulate it in so many ways. But if it is that you are talking about inciting attacks the same way, some persons may decide, well, look, I am fed up with journalists, so therefore I'm inciting attacks against the media. Look at President Trump in the USA. Are you saying that his behavior is acceptable? You as a media practitioner, the way he attacks the media every day? Come on, Edison. I I, I, I certainly don't think this is what you are saying, and I, I would hope that's not the point you're making at all. We, t- we talk about actions people take to get things done in their communities. You know, they, they, they write letters, as the case might be. They, they, they maybe walk around the savannah and so on. Nothing gets done. Only when they decide to take extreme action, they burn tires and whatever, lo and behold, things get done. 
And then, Edison, we can also say that the 1990 coup was an extreme action because persons felt frustrated. Are you saying that that was a right action? But it and was just a few people. Point, it was Edison. just a few people. It doesn't it matter how many people. people. It, it doesn't is. matter, Edison. And I, I, I am, I am, I am appalled. I am really, really appalled at this line of reasoning you are, you, you are, you are articulating this morning. Martin it makes George, absolutely no sense. As, as, as we're looking at the point, though, we really need to make a distinction between freedom of expression and responsible expression. This is the point, and mm-hmm. this is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. If you look at some of the things people say on social media, they attack people's characters, sometimes with no basis whatsoever. They defame people. They say, and the, 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 there's a growing recklessness because people seem to think that, well, if I put it out there, um, there's no responsibility. I, I could say what I want. Oh, there's no response? Oh, there's acceptable. no response? Well, there's a response in this case. And I think it's very good that it's been investigated. As I say, I'm not sure that it necessarily may meet the threshold Mm -hmm. in terms of constituting a threat. Because what happens is, if you analyze it carefully, it appears to be a wish, a hope, a desire. But I'm saying even that ought to be unacceptable in terms of expressing that type of wish publicly because that cannot be the solution because then we descend into anarchy if we want to be a civilized society then we must always set and maintain higher standards edison we must never allow our base and guttural feelings to dominate and rule our thoughts words and actions regardless of how strongly we feel Mm -hmm. and that's that that's that's the distinction between ourselves and the lower animals we mm-hmm. have the ability to reason, to think, to analyze. And an animal will only act on instinct. So therefore, that's the response you would get because they're acting on instinct. There's no thought process or reasoning that overlays that instinct to temper the behavior. But we as human beings, we've been blessed with intellect, intelligence, reasoning. So therefore, we now, regardless of how strongly we feel, we must recognize that, look, within the norms of a civilized society, there are certain things that no matter how we strongly we feel, we have to temper our responses and moderate what we say, do, and think in terms of a public scenario. And also in terms of our public officials, we may not like them. We don't have to like them. And you see, I, that, that's the distinction I want to make. You may not like them. You may not support them. You may not agree with them. And you may want to express your views. And certainly you have a right to do so. But I think we have to be clear that we must never allow it to cross that line where you are wishing publicly that, you know, such, I mean, horrific things can befall, um, you know, our, our leaders and politicians. But would you say, Mr. George, that we are already in an anarchic um, conditions? I mean, you, you look at the, the kinds of crimes that are being committed, the, the, the children, you know, the innocent, as the case might be, and nothing is done. Um, the police would say, well, you know, uh, the, the line is always, we are investigating. Um, there's no apparent motive, as the case might be. And the bodies are falling and nothing. And anybody now is fair game. Anybody knows right. fair game. And, so you, and you, if that's the scenario, Edison, is the solution to encourage more anarchy? How, how, could, that, how could any rational person accept that encouragement? But I mean, there is an the extremity same? in the language. I, 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 I concede that. You must. You, you but, have to concede, Edison. You didn't have a choice. Let, let's be fair. You, as a media practitioner, you did not have a choice. You could not publicly stand up here this morning and, and defend this. You could not. But I so can, I can understand the no. extremity of the language. And I can understand I, it. You, we could understand the frustration. That I will see. We can understand the frustration which may... And the know, rage. Impel, and the rage, I agree, which may impel persons to feel, well, oh, you know, I, I feel there's no choice. But certainly we must never at all encourage persons to actually act out on that frustration in such manner. Because as I said, that's the 1990 coup all, all over again. And, and we know that that has been a defining and watershed moment in the history of Trinidad and Tobago. We've never recovered from that. Mm. And I don't think we ever will. So, you know, um, I have never, ever been one who advocates this type of behavior. And I will never, ever support mm. regardless of who's in power, regardless of what is going on, regardless of how bad things are, I will never, ever see that descending into a state of, you know, persons doing what they wish and 
you know, basically seeking to take the law into their own hands to say, well, look, I wish I could do this. No, 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 no. That, Trinidad and Tobago, I implore you, is never a solution. That cannot be our solution because you, you, you go down the road of a never-ending spiral if you if you start down that path. Mm-hmm. Martin George. Um, okay, so this is this is the first, and it probably won't be the last case like this that will crop up before us. Um, you know, this is going to force people to really double check what they say, or are they going to become even more vitriolic um, in 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 response to what has happened, which is what we would have seen happen on social media over the weekend. Well, I think we ought to have a lot more public education in terms of, you know, explaining to people that, look, hey, nobody is seeking to restrict your freedom of speech, your right to self-expression and that type of thing. And maybe the government and the government information unit ought to do a lot more in that regard. And even on this type of program with these types of exchanges that we have on this program, you know, we are playing our part in public education. And I always say that it's an important role we play here in terms of raising in the level of this course so that persons understand that look there is a difference between mm. expressing yourself you can express yourself very strongly very passionately very forcefully and still not cross that line whereby you you know end up being the subject of a criminal investigation because mm-hmm. of the way you express yourself and that's all i'm saying you know um i certainly would encourage persons Express your views, and I always say that on this program, you know, let's have discussions. We may not always agree. In fact, we could violently disagree in words without being offensive. Just a matter of how we choose our language and how we express ourselves. And I, I think that is what we ought to cultivate in the society. You look at how um, persons in um, the, the parliament in, in Britain, how, how they function. I mean, they, they have the, the most terrible arguments. Mm-hmm. But of course, it's put across in such you know, um, you know, elegant language, polished, elegant language, and with such sophistry that you know you, you you have to stop a little bit to analyze it, and you realize, wow, I'm gonna really mess up that other person there, yes. you know. Yes. <laughs> but the thing is, they, they, it's how you say it, how yes. you put it across, and that's what we need to encourage. So, in other words, you you could make just as stinging an attack, but you put it in such a nice way that it never, ever crosses any line to, you know, allow you to end up being the subject of, um, you know, any criminal investigation. You know, so that, that's all I'm mm-hmm. saying, you know. Um, so I, I, I want to make it clear to the free speech advocate, I'm fully supportive of that. I'm fully supportive of, you know, um, being able to express your anger, your frustration, your outrage, your disappointment, whatever. But we must always be constrained by the norms of civil society. Because if we allow ourselves to break down those barriers, then I think all hell will break loose. We've got um, a text message here that I want to share with you and also callers who want to get in on the conversation. And I'm quoting here, quote, how would he defend Heinz saying he will he will slay them dead or on social media? He called a lady a wastrel or another woman saying they should slit his parents throat for making someone so stupid referring to this guy you are talking about. Double standards are too real. End quote. Well, I will never seek to defend Mr. Hines. He can defend himself. <laughs> if he uh, I am not his advocate at all, and I will not attempt to assume that role at all. All right. I just want to bring up a couple of callers quickly. Good morning. You're on the Breakfast Roundtable. Uh, Hello. Good morning. You're on the Breakfast Roundtable. A very good morning to you, Jesse. Good morning, Mr. Santa Cruz. And to Mr. Carl. Santa Cruz. Mr. George, good morning. Hi, good morning to you. Uh, Mr. George, you said that the language used was not tantamount to a threat. No, I said if what was quoted is correct, in my respectable view, it does not necessarily seem to amount to a threat. Uh, I'm very careful in terms of the words I use. How then would you define, literally define the language used. Thank you. Well, it appears to be a wish or a hope that something very awful happens, you know, to, um, you know, the family of the prime minister. And that, I think, is unacceptable mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, 
social norms of behavior. But as I said, if those are the words that were actually used, mm-hmm. I think the police ought to consider carefully as to whether they actually constitute a threat. Because in my respectful view, it may not actually be a threat. In other words, it, it would have been a different thing if the gentleman said, I will do ABC. Yes, yes, you know? yes, yes. But if his expression was, I hope somebody does yes. ABC, then I'm not sure that is a threat. That's just my respectful view, and I am subject to correction if it is that those were not the words used. Good morning. You're on the breakfast round table. Yes, uh, good morning, ma'am. Good morning, Mr. Belmont. Hi, uh, thank you for taking my call. Belmont, George. morning. I would like to say a few words to, to George. Yes, go I ahead. I much respect and Could you just speak uh, into I'm your, into your mouth, please, clearly. please? You're muffled. We're not hearing you. Yes, good morning, Mr. George. I say Hi, good morning, George. that I have seen you much often at police headquarters at the functions there. I have much respect for you, and I oftentimes I wish you were a politician. But this morning, I tend to disagree with you. When the, uh, President Trump was elected, I had got on Facebook and I had said that, how do you move from a law professor to somebody like that? You're not dealing with a, a beauty pageant. We're dealing with the whole the expectations of a president, and I hope he does not destroy America. Now, that, that in itself is acceptable. But that gentleman had gone way, way overboard, sir. You cannot instigate and tell me, go and do so and say, oh, that, I mean, that deserves a jail time or serious reprimand. You cannot castigate a whole country, a, 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 a representative of a country, a prime minister and his daughter, sir, his daughter. You tell us he's going to rape his daughter, sir. Mm-hmm. So okay. I'm not sure you, 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 you heard or understood me clearly at all. I fully agree with you. You are, you are actually in violent agreement with me. I said exactly the same thing. I said it's unacceptable. So maybe you, maybe you didn't hear he, he my probably didn't hear it clearly. clearly. Um, would, it be, would it be okay for me to, to repeat the, the statement so that people can understand what it is he said? Well, no, the thing is, I, I'm not sure it's necessary, but I just need to clarify with that caller. That mm-hmm. exactly what he is saying, that it's unacceptable, is what I've been trying to say all morning. All so right. maybe, maybe he um, mistook um, or misunderstood my, my comments. Okay. Um, now, uh, I'm just looking at the story that would have come out recently. Um, and the gentleman said that I was very upset about the murders of the little boy and his caretaker. And what I meant with that post was that only when someone who is of rank or their family gets that, then maybe they will do something about crime. But um, just because you're frustrated, that doesn't mean that you should go to that extreme. And this is the lesson here that I think everybody would, would, would be taking away from this move, yes? Not just that. I think the very fact that the young man issued an apology, I think he himself realizes that the words used were unacceptable. So, and and that that's all I'm saying. We we must understand the distinction between your frustration and the manner in which you express it. I mean, it the language was intemperate, but of course, you ah, must you must you must you, you must understand the background to this whole scenario. This is, and we this fully is what I'm do. Saying. We fully do. And I, I'm not I'm not in any way diminishing his pain, his anger, his anguish. We're not seeking to diminish that at all. In fact, I think it it exemplifies exactly how frustrated he was feeling, the fact that he felt propelled to use such language. But I'm saying he himself must have recognized in hindsight that this was not acceptable because of the fact that he himself has publicly issued an apology. So I think that speaks for itself. And I hope, again, this clarifies it for that Belmont caller, because I certainly don't want any of your listeners leaving with the impression that Belmont seemed to have in terms of what my comments were this morning, Jesse May. All right? I have made it very clear that Mm -hmm. I consider it totally unacceptable, and it ought not to be encouraged in terms of crossing that line, while still encouraging as much as possible the fullest use of free speech and, you know, um, Mm -hmm. public expression. 
Now, um, just as a matter of interest, can we expect to see more and more of this type of thing happening as, as the days I, I, go I forward? Think, I think we will, and I think it's only until eventually you start seeing persons maybe being charged and brought before the courts on a regular basis that persons will realize that, look, there ought to be some level of, you know, caution in terms of what you see. Um, and then even you will see more and more um, examples of cyber defamation actions being brought in the high court. So yes. even if it's not criminal, the point is if you defame somebody's character on Facebook, on social media with no basis, and it's an actionable tort in that it falls within the line of defamation of character, you can bring such matters. And we've had examples of such matters um, brought before the courts in Trinidad and Tobago already. And the thing is, people realize more and more that you can take action. So it's just a caution generally to everyone that we ought to be careful in terms of how we express ourselves and what we see. Even with respect to this recent um, you know, situation with the, um, the appointment and the disappointment of the um, recent Minister of Public Utilities, Ms. Marlene MacDonald, you know, I, I look at some of the comments and statements and I wonder and say, wow, people are being really reckless in terms of things, you know. Because if you if one were to analyze it, Jesse and Edison, mm -hmm. um, one wonders, I, I am not yet sure as to what was the reason why the prime minister um, fired the goodly lady the second time around. Because I am looking at this scenario and I'm hearing people you know, make statements in terms of um, a certain guest who um, I think certainly one, one of the things that I, I, I think he certainly stands accused of is having appallingly bad fashion sense and, and his taste in dress. You know, and mm -hmm. attire, you know, um, that cannot be disputed in terms of what we saw, um, how he was attired it for that function. It wasn't haute couture? <laughs> it certainly it was. It was a hot something. It certainly <laughs> wasn't. You know, it was a hot mess, I think. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, I mean, I think certainly if we are to accuse him of something, it's that. Mm. But it, apart from that, I, I'm not sure. Is, is it, I've not seen anything saying that this was a convicted criminal or anything of the sort, and of course, subject to whatever the police or the national security may say in that regard. So one wonders if it's on that basis alone that mm -hmm. um, she was removed. I haven't. One of the one anything. of the biggest sins, based on the information we have, one of the biggest sins that would have been committed on Friday is the fact that he was not on the guest list, and she um, had him as part of her party. He was not on any list. He had not been checked out by security in advance. And mm -hmm. she basically took him with her um, everywhere that she would have been. Um, so that, so of a, course, it, it's a protocol, it's a pro issue it's, we, it's a we protocol and a security issue, considering where we are in today's world. And then, and then when it is determined that this individual has a particular kind of history with law enforcement, that would have, that would have sent up a lot, of, a lot of blaring signals and red lights flashing. Yeah? Okay. It, it's just that I, I, I'm wondering, because the thing is, I mean, I, I don't know what information the Ministry of National Security has as to, um, you know, as you say, the, the signal that may have been sent up um, in, to, in terms of a security concern. But, All the language um, they're using is that he is very well known to the police. That's the language okay. they use. Okay. Also, maybe they're using some type of code language that we can't yes. understand. Because yes. the point is, we've had, I mean, scenarios where we've had government ministers who've been charged. In fact, we had a prime minister who was convicted, if you understand me. Yes. So, you know, I, I'm not sure as to where do you draw the line in terms of that. So are you saying that um, any of these former government ministers, I mean, in fact, we have former several former government ministers who are still before the courts on several criminal charges. So is it that they are also persons, personas non grata at President's house? Um, you know, so I'm just throwing that out there, Jesse May, to try to understand the rationale. You know, um, we've had former uh, minister Jack Warner who spent a night as a guest at um, one of the um, nation's facilities. You know, he was highly upset about it. But, you know, so therefore, we, we just have to ask ourselves, is it that there is some tangible evidence of something that really is actionable, which caused persons to say, well, look, 
this is definitely something that, you know, a, a minister ought to be fired or dismissed for, or whether it has been, in a sense, a knee-jerk reaction to a public outcry. And I'm just asking that because I love us to have these types of discussions to always try to look at, look, is there another side to the story or it, is there another aspect of it? It sounds as though you're hinting, intimating, and I'm getting some subtext that maybe Molly McDonald might have a case in the courts. I'm not suggesting that at all. I'm, I'm just I'm, double I'm checking. Also not <laughs> I'm <laughs> also not checking. attorney. But as I said, I, I have not seen anything publicly stating the reason why, at least from the Prime Minister himself, stating the reason why he dismissed her. There may mm-hmm. be other considerations that we are not aware of. In other words, Say, for instance, if it is that she had maybe misrepresented certain things to him, you know, um, then, of course, he would be well within his prerogative to say, well, look, um, I am dismissing you. And maybe this might have just been the, the right opportunity based on this public outcry. But I would love to hear from his office directly as to what was the exact reason. Because I am not sure that it's sufficient if one examines it to say, well, look, because there is a suspicion or an allegation, because if we function on the basis of allegations, let's not forget that um, the Prime Minister himself was the subject of allegations before the Integrity Commission. I mean, he was vindicated Mm -hmm. thoroughly, and, you know, he was cleared entirely, but the point is he himself knows the the danger of unsubstantiated allegations. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just asking these questions and of course i i mean no disrespect to anyone and i cast no slur on anyone's judgment or the exercise of that judgment but i'm just saying it would be nice if maybe um the nation could hear from his office as to the exact reason Mm -hmm. why he took the decision to dismiss her just want to squeeze in another call or two hello you're on the air all right Uh, hello good morning hello good morning I want to respectfully disagree with um, Mr. George. Yeah, with Mr. George on this last issue. Yeah, I agree with him on the cyber crime issue. Uh-huh. Both, um, public information. But uh, remember, um, your view maybe is a legal view, but from a political standpoint, Minister Silver, the pressure of the Prime Minister. And even the Prime Minister feels that the gentleman has a questionable character. And, and he wants to use that basis in terms of association. I think that's really Okay, okay, thank and you. Just, just, just to clarify, I'm not saying that the Prime Minister doesn't have a, a discretion or a choice. And in, you remember you said that at the Prime Minister's pleasure. In fact, yes. he doesn't need a reason, quite frankly, to get rid of anyone. <laughs> to dismiss anybody. He mm-hmm. doesn't need a reason. All I'm saying is that if he wishes, it would be nice if the nation could be told the reason in this case because it has attracted so much public attention and because of the fact that it certainly would appear you know very you know curious that you mm-hmm. would appoint someone on friday and then by sunday um that person is disappointed you know um so um it may be nice if we can hear the exact reason as to why and again he doesn't necessarily need to give the nation a reason so you know i'm, I'm just putting it out there as a question mm-hmm. But the bottom line, though, is uh, even with the Marlene McDonald um, saga, we also need to be careful about what we say and how we say it, uh, just as 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 um, uh, Riyad Mohammed has found to his to his um, detriment. Well, yes, certainly. Okay, so Jesse May, thanks very much. It's been a pleasure to chat with you, Edison. Yes. Always you. a pleasure. And Trinidad and Tobago, have a great day and a great week. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Martin George, Senior Attorney at Law and Member of the Police Service Commission, chatting with us here on the Breakfast Roundtable, another um, law, class, law, law class session. Uh, keep it here on Sky, folks. Connect with us online. Join us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and SoundCloud. Search Sky 995 FM.